Interest should be easy. 10% interest means that after some period of time you get 10% of what you're owed. Except, well, 10% of what exactly? The original amount? Let's suppose the bank gives you 10% interest in a year. It might be an unrealistic number, but let's run with it. You put in $100, you end the year with 110. The next year you get another 10%, but 10% of 100 or 110. Well, if you go with the original amount, you get $10, but hey, you could have taken that $10 and put it right back into the bank. If you originally had 110, you should get your extra dollars worth, so it makes sense to include interest when calculating the next interest. Great, so you can see that money will exponentially grow, but now let's suppose you don't want to wait the entire year to get the 10% interest. Okay, okay, how about this? I'll give you half the interest after 6 months, then the other half after another 6. Split it into 5% each, how about it? Well, if you remember that your $100 becomes 110 and then 121, you actually make more than a strict 20% increase, so this might actually mean you get more money. If I give you the money earlier, it becomes eligible for interest sooner. And as it turns out, splitting up your 10% interest into two payments of 5%, you earn an extra 25 cents. Okay, so that may not seem like a lot because 10% is a small amount, so let's instead suppose I tell you I'll give you 100% interest on your $100 this one year. You can divide it up into however many payments you want. Alright, so if you don't divide it up, you just get $100, up to 200 If you break it into 2, you get 150 and then 225 Break it into 4 and you got 125, 156.25, 192.31, all the way up to $244.14. Each time you get more and more money. Heh, <laughs> what an idiot I am. You just found a money hack. Break it up into infinitely many payments and you get infinite money. Except not really. I mean, if you think about it hard enough, you might notice that if your rate is so small you round down a cent, then you get no money at all. Unfortunate. So close to infinite money. Except, once again, not really. Even if you get rid of rounding, there's actually a limit to this compounding interest. And just as a quick definition, compounding is just the term I'm supposed to use when talking about how frequently interest gets broken up. You might see it in annual interest that is compounded monthly, so it'll be split into the 12 months. Anyway, that went a bit off track, but now we want to focus on if there's a limit. If you want to calculate how much money you have after interest, you add some percent to your 100. This is actually multiplication. If you add 10%, multiply by 1.1 to get 110. Do it again and you'll find that the 10% will automatically be taken out of the new value. With this, we find that compounding interest is a simple formula. Break your percentage up into any number of pieces, add it to 1, and multiply that many times. In other words, we get a number representing the money after one round of interest raised to the number of times you get interest. The result is this expression, 1 plus 1 over n to the n. Now, is there a limit? Well, that's a little tricky. Fortunately, we can expand this using the binomial theorem. If you're not too familiar with the binomial theorem, it generalizes the expansion of a plus b to the n as having coefficients in Pascal's triangle whose formula can be written as combinations. With it, we get that 1 plus 1 over n to the n is equal to n choose 0 times 1 to the n plus n choose 1 times 1 to the n minus 1 times 1 over n to the 1 plus n choose 2 times 1 to the n minus 2 times 1 over n to the 2, and so on. Now, we want to calculate this for really large n, so there will be a lot of terms. However, it's also so large that n-1 will be really close to n, and we would really love to get rid of these n-1 and n-2 terms. So let's just say that each of those n-whatevers are less than n. If we do that, we can cancel them out with the 1 over n terms. And with that, we are left with an interesting series of factorials which should be greater than the expansion we made. To show this is bounded, it's helpful to look at another sequence, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus dot dot dot, which you hopefully know sums to 2. I'm not going to go through this, so if you don't know, just take it for granted or look it up. Alright, so starting from 1 over 1 factorial, we can compare the numbers in the sequences to see that the ratio between the terms of the series of factorials is less than that of the sequence that sums to 2. Surely enough, that means the sequence of factorials is less than the halving sequence of fractions. If you add back in the extra 1, you also get the special number e, which is often just defined as the limit of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. There's so much more to say about this, ways this could be more rigorous, but I mean, interest should be simple, yet all it takes to get some complicated math is to stupidly try to make the most of it.